kind of hard to find out where you really are as a person. Sometimes we think we're in that we're, we're higher or lower than we are, but the key is that he says through prayer and fasting, and especially prayer and fasting, we um, are blessed. And so then we're given the strength and the grace to love our neighbor as ourselves, to love God with all our heart and soul. Son and Holy Spirit. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory forever. Today we are so blessed. Um, we celebrate the life of a great man, great Prince Vladimir of Russia. He, um, when the Russian land was considering which way to go, who to, who to follow after, whether it be a Latin, more of a Latinized uh, Christianity or a Greek Christianity, like Constantinople, when they sent envoys to Constantinople, the ones that came back said to Vladimir, said, told him that there was nothing, that they didn't know when they were entered into the cathedral whether they were touching the ground either. They were just so amazed. And just to tell you that um, that experience did not escape me when I was in Romania with my son, it was son, uh, it was uh, 2006, and we were. Um, it was really cold, really, really cold. I mean, so much colder than North, than Southern California, and they were, you know, doing their best. The boys were, and we we had just uh, getting ready to go to Greece for two weeks uh, on the same trip, and so. Uh, they came late to the liturgy. We were having a pre-sanctified liturgy, and these men, uh, these deacons, who were who were who were the choir for this monastery, they were singing the Our Father. And I, I believe it was one of the most beautiful versions of the Our Father I've ever heard. And when the service was over, my son. My youngest son said to me at the time, he said, Dad, I, when I walked in, I didn't know whether my feet were touching the ground. Now he was 10 years old at the time, 11. And so, and he was experiencing it in a kind of a way without a lot of preconceived knowledge or thinking about what it is to be orthodox. See, it doesn't mean you're lifted up off the ground necessarily, but in that sense of the Holy Spirit and the profoundness of the Holy Spirit, this is the day, for instance, when in Russia, in Kiev, the entire city came to the river under the guidance of Great Prince Vladimir, and everybody that was there that day went into the water and were baptized. And it said that in the commentary on that particular event, it said that the entire land was transformed. Everything about those people was transformed in that very, very momentary, that moment they were transformed. It changed everything. And that change never stopped happening. Because sanctity and holiness continues to flow in those lands where there are martyrs and there are recent new martyrs and all kinds of things that occurred there. The fact that there has been tribulation, war, and all that, that, that is a part of the fallen world. Unfortunately, we are too, uh, as, a, as a people, we have a hard time controlling our uh, emotions and our passions and our thoughts and our feelings. And so they spill over into wars and rumors of wars and all those things. But I'm more interested in the transformation that took place and the transformation that takes place in every divine liturgy. I'm more interested in that because for, from, the, from the 325 AD to the last ecumenical council, the seventh ecumenical council, the fathers of, those, of the church at that, during those time periods 
although they were battling against people who were heretics, people who were non-believers, and they were holding fast to what it is to be Orthodox Christian, which has never changed from that time to this. Still transformative still has the power to transform human life into something better, something holy, something blessed. It still has that possibility because nothing has changed. We are that practice from the beginning. The same truth that was, that was evident at Pentecost when the world saw its first true transformation when Jesus Christ, when God sent down the Holy Spirit upon the apostles and gave birth to the church from that time until now things have stayed the same nothing new under the sun once said always said there's nothing new under the sun so then it comes to us well there's nothing new under the sun I, I hear this story about great Prince Vadim which I encourage you all to look up because it's too long for me to actually read through it. But it's an amazing story because he wasn't like it was an easy, like a piece of cake for him to do what he did. He was transforming a, na a, new, a new nation that would become Orthodox and would be called eventually as the fallen Byz the, the Byzantine Empire fell to the Muslims, the um, Eastern Orthodox uh, went that, that, that transference went to the Russians who then began to develop their own saints and their own heroes uh, like this week we celebrate the life of Saint Sarah from the Sarah um, and, and others you know these great 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 men and women saints that even came to America not only did, was it in Russia not only was it in the Byzantine uh, period and time the Roman period and time but it came all the way to the United States of America. And we celebrate that's the same services, the same liturgy, the same belief since those councils were convened and held in place. They held play, they held, they held us so that we would have something to inherit, eternal life. They held us close. God has held us close. The Holy Spirit has held us close. He has given us the ability to breathe in and to be a part of his one holy Catholic and apostolic church, which hasn't changed, as I said before. Nothing new under the sun. So, you know, it's for us. We have to have faith and we have to believe in not only these events that occurred, the Pentecost and the ecumenical councils and, of course, the baptism of Russia, which took place. We celebrate this today. This is the day in Kiev where they baptized, where Russia was baptized by Vladimir, great Prince Vladimir. And, you know, and after, afterward, after that baptism, after that glorious trans, trans, you know, that glorious moment, then guess what? Other things happened as well. And there were skirmishes and wars and rumors of wars and all those things. There was communism, which tried to eliminate Christianity from Russia. It did not succeed. Orthodoxy, there are more churches in, my, in Moscow right now, more Orthodox churches. There's as many as there ever were, even before the revolution. They rebuilt churches and monasteries and, and all that. And it's, again, the same belief, the same ideology, the same... Theology, nothing different, nothing new under the sun, and it continues to blossom and grow forth in America. We are witnesses to that growth. We have people that come in on a regular, consistent basis and come to want to join and be part of the Orthodox Church. People that maybe just a few months ago were just kind of like, with what's Orthodoxy? And then they come and they find and they see and they feel and they sense they get and they partake, and they participate in the services, the classes, the movie nights, everything to understand that orthodox world view, to understand that which Father Seraphim Rose talked about a lot, to have an orthodox world view. 
some of the reasons why I try to get the new people that come in to read Dostoevsky, for instance, is because Father Seraphim Rose believed that when you read a classic like that that takes place in a Russian land, in, a, in an Orthodox land, you actually get a, to have a sense of what an Orthodox world would even begin to look like. It wouldn't be perfect. It wouldn't be without strife. It wouldn't be without people doing the wrong things, but it would be with some people doing the right things. You see, it carried on, it carries on, it doesn't, doesn't stop with any one generation. And even though the communists, when they came into uh, places uh, and destroyed all the churches and blew them up, blew up the very Christ the Savior Cathedral in Moscow, they blew it up. And they, you know, some people came in the middle of the night and dragged away stones. There's still stones in uh, Dan Danilov, I think, his monastery, where they still have stones from the original Christ the Savior Cathedral, but that took years to build. But when they decided they were going to rebuild it, they made it even better, like it was originally, but even better in a sense. And it has brought renewal to Russia, to Moscow, to the various places. It's, it's one of the most beautiful cathedrals in this world. So we have a blessing. We have our inheritance from Greece, from Russia, from uh, you know other parts of the world, Georgia, and uh, and other places where these wonderful saints have, have have dwelt and lived and passed on their knowledge and sent their people to our own country. Well, we have our brother Peter, who's got a relative that was a saint in Russia. We have, you know, uh, it, it's just one after another after another. And if you are named Vladimir, today is your name day. Today is a, is a big name day for you because this is the day to celebrate his life, that wonderful life that transformed the Russian people. So may, even though nothing is perfect in this world, even though there is still anger, resentment, you know, and all the various things that uh, exist, the sins that exist, we don't have to be participants in those things. Our participation is to prayer, fasting, almsgiving, but a life of prayer. St. Isaac the Syrian, he um, wrote a book on homiletics, which are really, they're, they're really profound. Um, one, of the, one of the saints said, well, all you can do for St. Isaac the Syrian is read it one page at a time. And he said that in reading one page at a time, you're holding up, hit that page is like a mirror into your soul. A mirror into your soul that tells you exactly where you are in terms of Jesus Christ and how things are. Well, I think that's great. I think that's awesome. You know, it's very, it's very, um, it's kind of scary to read a little bit, but just to say, because it's kind of hard to find out where you really are as a person. Sometimes we think we're in that we're, we're higher or lower than we are, but the key is that he says through prayer and fasting, and especially prayer and fasting, we um, are blessed. And so then we're given the strength and the grace to love our neighbor as ourselves, to love God with all our heart and soul to be as the holy apostles, to be as the fathers of the ecumenical council, to be as great Prince Vladimir who ordered that all his people get baptized in the river on that given day, which started a whole movement when Russia was baptized. We give glory to God for that, and we thank God for everything in our life that is present, that struggles, the, the ups and downs, all you have to do, all you have to do is hold fast. Hold fast to what you've been taught. The theology, the practice that you've been given and taught as you've come to, uh, to dwell here in Armand Church. We try to do things the way that they're supposed to be done. Of course, we're never perfect, but we, just, we strive with all our heart and soul and mind to be to have that perfection in us. We just finished an incredible a week of painting icons upstairs of St. John the, the, the Baptist. And um, it was a joyous, profound, incredible time. 
and all who were present for even a, one or two days even, your life is transformed in those days. Your life becomes more than you can even imagine. You have a chance to, re, to re, reproduce on that wood, on that gesso, with that, with that egg tempera, a chance to paint the icon of St. John the Baptist, my, my patron saint. And what an amazing experience it was. It's nothing like, it's not like just painting a flower on a page or something like that. It's, it's much more than that. And when you finish and you look at that icon and it looks back at you and reflects in your heart, you know that something profound has happened. Again, something transformative. Something that transformed you into something better than you were the day before because it's of Christ. And so painting icons, singing hymns, of, hymns uh, to, to the Mother of God, to, to the, the hymns throughout the service, just singing, Lord have mercy, saying the Jesus prayer slowly and with as much calmness as possible, Lord, that Jesus Christ have mercy on me, a sinner, to have that profoundness grow in, in your soul, in your heart at all times. This is what these saints did. This is how they practice their religion. They practice it by being active in it. You have to be active in the faith of Jesus Christ. And so we will leave you with this, that it is God's blessing that each of you inherit the kingdom of heaven. May you be sober-minded, that idea of nipsis, which is the middle ground, that you be sober-minded in how you approach each and every moment of each and every day that you pray without ceasing, that you read scripture daily, that you follow Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to forever. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. Blessed are the blameless in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. 